It's often said that one of the things that makes living in Kelloland so wonderful is the heart of its people. That's certainly true when talking with our next guests. After hearing about the tragic death of Emily Groth due to fentanyl poisoning last May, her family, including her mom, Kelloland's Angela Kennecke, have made it their mission to do everything possible to give others hope of recovery from addiction. They are being joined in that effort by a lot of generous sponsors, donors, and organizations hoping to help. Jake McKenzie and Austin Weber are with the Sioux Falls Curling Association, which is hosting a fundraising event to benefit Emily's Hope. And of course, Angela Kennecke is the face of that effort, representing the family and their efforts to help others to take that first step forward to healing. Thank you all for joining us today. You're welcome. Well, Thank Angela, you for having me. I would like to start with you. Um, can you explain some background on Emily's Hope? Sure. Well, um, after my daughter died in May of fentanyl poisoning, um, and she was the seventh person to die in the Sioux Falls area, and since then there have been about 25 deaths. And my thought was, I don't want this to happen to any other family. I don't want any other mother to ever have to go through this. And we have to do better. We have to do better in reducing the stigma surrounding addiction. We have to have more education and prevention. And we have to get more people into treatment. And we have to make it easier for people and remove some of those financial barriers as well. So Emily's Hope is all about doing those things. And we recently became our own 501c3, which is really exciting. Um, and we have so much community support. That's what's been, part of it has to do with, I think I've been on the air for 30 years. So a lot of people, I have a big platform and a lot of people know you know who I am but I think also the cause I mean it's touched so many families addiction touches nearly everybody you either know somebody you work with you have someone in your family um, maybe a friend everybody knows somebody who struggles with addiction issues so it is prevalent in our society it's a huge societal problem and we need to do more we need to do better and I think through Emily's hope we can do that and as I was saying we've had so much community support and have organized several events and the one coming up next which I'm super excited about. So my husband is a hockey referee and a hockey player and um, fascinated with curling, uh, just another ice sport that got a lot of attention in the Olympics last year. And the curling club of Sioux Falls has generously agreed to host a curling event for us on Friday the 22nd. So super excited about that. And now we'll get into some curling. Um, there might be some people out there watching who might not know what it is. Can you explain these big rocks and the broom? <laughs> uh, yeah, so curling is, I guess, kind of like bowling on ice is a way to describe bowling it. Bowling on ice, there's, that's there's, a great way there's to describe it. There's a few it. other ways to describe it. Um, but what you're doing is you're taking these about 40-pound granite stones and sliding them down the ice to the other end where you're aiming for a 12 by 12 bullseye, and you want to end after 16 stones are thrown with the one or multiple closest to the center. Um, that's how you score points. Uh, it's really easy to learn. I like to compare it to bowling or golf or something like that. What are we that. looking at here? That is the, what we're looking at is the house. Um, so those bullseyes you see okay. are the house. That's where you're aiming for. And this is on the rink. This is what's drawn yep. on, on so the rink. So this is yeah. on the ice, and it's about 130 feet end to end. Uh, this is 146, but it's not always the exact same. Um, here you have some footage of a. a us doing. I'm getting dizzy now. <laughs> yeah, us doing some. <laughs> some almost passed out. Uh, in the past. That won't happen to you if you come out and try to curl. <laughs> um, one thing that's really nice is the event we're looking to do is really accessible. Um, you don't need special shoes. You don't need skates. You're not doing it on skates, as you can see in the footage there. Um, they're essentially just kind of like sneakers. You can wear whatever. Um, Jake, do you have anything to add? Uh, we're just really excited to have people out there. It's such a unique sport, and a lot of people don't realize that you can come as you are. Wear flexible jeans, or don't wear jeans at all. <laughs> sweatpants. But some sort of sweatpants. But wear pants. flexible. It's, yeah, a little, yeah. please. it's a little bit cool on it's the ice. It's about 40 degrees on the ice. Okay. okay. And so comfortable, but when you start sweeping, you warm up very quickly. <laughs> and we should mention that the Shields Iceplex is donating, you know, yeah. the, the rink time oh, for wow. uh, this entire afternoon. And you don't have to come and stay the whole time. I think a lot of people are worried about that time commitment on oh, a work yeah. day. Yeah. Um, you can come out and just for an hour or two learn to curl. Uh, you can take part in a match, or you can just come out for lunch and come out to support the cause, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Wow, and there's still room for teams to sign up as well, correct? There are, there are yes. Okay. We've got some room for teams or individuals. Wow. If you've got one or two of you and you want to join, we'll help match you with oh, someone else sure. who wants to come support yeah. Emily's Hope. That's so cool. So i got to ask them, how did you two get so interested in curling? Um, so 
The United States won the gold medal this last year. Mm -hmm. I started curling four years before that. Um, so right around the, the prior Olympics to that, um, my wife and I were living in Bismarck, North Dakota at the time. We'd only been there for a year. We didn't really know anybody. And uh, we needed a way to, to meet people and, and just kind of get involved. And uh, we went and tried a, a Learn to Curl event. We had a great time, and we've been curling together ever since. And you guys have a spring league as well, correct? Yeah, so our, our spring league is going to start up on March 10th. Um, registration for that is open the same place you can register for the Emily's Hope event, which is www.sfcurling.com. Um, yeah, and it's a 10-week league. We're open to any, any skill level. We have a lot of beginners this new year after the Olympic gold medal last year. Right. Um, so we have how many members started. are in the curling club now? It's growing, yeah. right? Um, we're up to around 160 individual wow. members. That's we're great. hoping to push to 180, 200 with this spring. And um, we want—I want, I really want to thank all the volunteers too from the curling club who are giving up their time to come out and help with this. It's totally awesome. Not only that, like you said, it's a community effort. Yeah. We've got volunteers from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. You know, curlers come from everywhere. Right. And you said uh, that you had some coming in from as far as two hours away to just come up and curl, <laughs> yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And how, uh, real quickly, how hard is it to pick up the game of curling if someone like me wanted to get started in it? Oh, not at all. Okay. Truly. Yeah. It's, I, I like to tell people it's like golf. Anyone can do it. It's hard to be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we That's just to like see me. You come out and learn on the 22nd. You will see me All because right, awesome. I need to get oh, started fantastic. in this. And then I did want to reiterate, I have time for one last question. I wanted to bring it up one more time. Next Friday is the fundraiser, correct? That's right. So it's mm -hmm. Friday the 22nd. Um, there you see on your screen, it's a it's just there are several chunks. It's broken down into several chunks, right? Yeah, we'll we'll have a big learn to curl from 11 to 1. And then we have a little bit of time to reprep the ice. And then in the afternoon, a lot of people might have to leave after lunch. Those who can stay, we're going to play games all afternoon. We're going to have fun on the ice, and it'll be a good time for everyone. Well, that's amazing. Well, I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. This was great. And make sure to get there next Friday and get to this wonderful event. All right. We hope to have some folks from the newsroom curling, too, so it'll just be fun for people to come watch. Yes. <laughs> I'm so in. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.